It seemed like for a while, family vloggers were all about blurring their kids' faces or pulling them out of videos entirely, right? They knew exactly why they should do it. Privacy, safety, all of that. But here's the thing, a lot of those same influencers have completely backtracked. Either they're acting like they never said it, or they found some creative excuse to bring their kids back into the spotlight. Today, we're diving into influencers who have done just that. They'll say it's because they don't want to let 1% of weirdos ruin it for everyone, or that their videos bring joy to so many people, but let's be real. We know the actual reason they've brought their kids back into the mix. Also, leave a comment if there's a specific family vlogger or influencer you want me to cover, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Okay, let's dive into this with Josh and Abby Herbert. These two have been doing everything in their power to dodge the typical 9-to-5 grind, and after several attempts, they finally struck gold. Now, in case you didn't know, Josh actually started out as a singer before he ever met Abby or had kids, but clearly that didn't pan out the way he had hoped because, well, he's not exactly releasing chart-topping hits today. Abby had a bit of success as a model, but it wasn't exactly enough to support the lifestyle that they were chasing. Before kids, they tried launching a candle company in 2020, and spoiler alert, it wasn't exactly a cash cow. Then, they tried their hand at a clothing brand. Again, this was back in 2020. Same story, no one was really interested. They began doing TikToks together in around 2020, and like many other couples at the time, they jumped right onto the trend of doing the cute couple videos. They did okay, but what really made them go viral was Abby's first pregnancy. They milked that content like no other influencer I've seen, and when their daughter Poppy was born, she basically became the face of their social media. They even pulled a stunt by claiming they named her Poot, which brought them a lot of viral attention. Poppy quickly became the star of the show across all their platforms, and when they had their second child, it was the same thing with them. More baby content, more views. But then, about a year or so ago, things got weird. People noticed that the kids weren't showing up in their post, or if they were, their faces were blurred out. And this was kind of odd, especially since Poppy was essentially the reason that their social media blew up. So somebody asked on Instagram, if they stop putting their kids online. And Abby said that they are limiting the kids for their protection as much as I want to share my children with everyone because I think they're the cutest kids ever. I have to protect them and keep them safe. This is something we've been discussing for months and with some recent incidents, we decided it was time. So around this time, Josh and Abby shifted gears and tried becoming podcasters like many other influencer couples, basically trying to take the shift off of family vlogging and just focus more on them, keeping their kids out of all of it. But here's the thing, views don't lie. Without their kids in the mix, no one really cared what they had to say. The podcast views were nothing compared to the engagement they got when their kids were involved. So then all of a sudden, the kids were back on the channel. No explanation, especially Poppy. Now they're all over Abby and Josh's social media again. But what's so unsettling about this is that Abby openly admitting to knowing that it was dangerous to put her kids online. She herself said that incidents had happened. What does she even mean by that? Are people coming to their house, being weird in public? I really can only imagine what she meant by that. I don't, I just can't imagine being an influencer, honestly, having weird incidents happen like that with your kids and then continuing to put them out there online. But here's the harsh truth. Without their kids, Josh and Abby would not be able to afford their new house, vacations, designer clothes, and everything else that comes with the influencer lifestyle. All their failed kidless ventures have proved that. So in the end, they chose profit over protecting their kids and there's just no other way to put it. So I can't do a video like this without bringing up the Sikoni Jolies, who, in my opinion, are some of the worst offenders in the family vlogging world. These two have been at it for over 15 years, and for most of that time, their kids have been the star of the show. They are one of the OG family vloggers back when the whole idea seemed pretty innocent. But fast forward to today, their popularity has seriously tanked on their Sikoni Jolie family from their glory days. Then in 2022, Jonathan suddenly took down all the videos from their family channel. Probably one of the most influential and probably um, like original kind of influence, like family influences, whatever it was. So that's why I taught about if I remove the videos and I put up a video on it, like maybe I'll kind of like motivate other people or inspire other people to follow suit. And maybe it'll be this like moment where, you know, we were there at the beginning and maybe we could like sort of orchestrate the end of it or something. I'm not really sure, you know, because yeah. I don't, I don't think it's great, but we did it and I can't take that back. And, you know, it really seemed like they were done, and I have to admit, I thought it was a pretty cool move. So many YouTubers who claim to take their kids offline 
still leave up all the old monetized videos featuring their kids. Kind of defeats the purpose. But they, the Zucconi Jolies, actually wiped everything clean. For a second, it felt like a noble decision. But of course, that did not last. Before we knew it, the videos were back and the focus had totally shifted to their second child, Eduardo, who now goes by Edie. They had been capitalizing on Edie's trans journey every step of the way, and it became painfully obvious they thought Edie was their ticket to a comeback. And it kind of worked. I mean, when she was in a video where they were talking about her trans journey, the video got way more views than whenever she wasn't. I could honestly go on and on about this because seriously, who documents their seven-year-old's trans journey for the entire internet? So Jonathan himself has said he wants his kid to share their own stories when they're older and not have him or Anna do it for him. But then he turns around and does exactly that, living vicariously through his child and using Edie's journey for content. And if you're wondering where this is coming from, Jonathan has had his own realizations about his gender identity over the years, which is a whole other rabbit hole. He even made a video about how long it took for him to feel comfortable in his own skin and how he doesn't want labels, yet here he is labeling his young child and capitalizing on it at every turn. Now, the Sacconi Jolie family channel has been inactive for six months, but don't be fooled. They have not gone anywhere. Jonathan has his own channel and it actually surpassed the family channel and subscribers. But, surprise, surprise, it still is all about the kids. The views on this new channel blow their old numbers out of the water, which makes you wonder if they just shifted gears when the original channel started a flatline. Okay, so the last family channel I'm diving into is Della Vlogs. So, Bella and Dallin had been documenting their IVF journey for a while, and then they announced they were going to adopt. In a Q&A, they actually said they weren't sure if they were going to show the child online, but they were adamant about not wanting to share her adoption story. I want to talk about that because I'm already feeling like a mama bear. Like, I am, like, so protective of my baby that I don't have yet. To me, I feel like the baby's adoption story is something that's like sacred and personal and private. And I really don't know how many details we're going to even share. We probably won't share a lot. I don't of think we're going to share like any details. Like really. we're not going to share where the baby came from, anything about the birth mother. Like that stuff is just very private. Very, it does very not private. need to be out on the internet. And I just don't want my baby to like watch these videos back in the future. And like, be like, wow, my parents like shared all of my details of like my birth right. and like my life, like where it came from with the whole internet. The way that we see it is we're going to be documenting our experiences yeah. and what Bella and I go through and what we feel and have because we're able to regulate all of that. It's going to be about us because us becoming parents us becoming, we're just yeah. very protective of the baby like there's days where i'm like do i even want to put their face on the internet i don't know like i, yeah. I just think we'll cross that road when we get to it i'm full mama bear right now i'm just very particular about what we're going to post about the baby and i want to make sure we do it in the right way people have actually referred to story as a prop for bella how do you go from being super protective of your child's privacy referring to yourself as a mama bear to showcasing every moment of your child online the answer, of course, money. Money is always going to surpass these family vloggers' children's privacy. Does not matter. They'd rather have the money to go on their trips and their this and their that, and they'll figure it out later when their kids are adults and are probably going to hate them. But anyway, with Belle and Dallin, what's really sad is that their daughter doesn't get a say in any of this. She doesn't get to choose if she wants the world to know her entire life story, her adoption, everything. Bella and Dallin took that decision away from her the second they met her. And now it's all out there for the internet to consume. It's just heartbreaking. Well, guys, that's it for today. I don't get how family vlogging is still a thing. But unfortunately, even if it went away today, there's still so many other platforms out there for parents to exploit their kids on. The bottom line, though, with this video is, and what this video proves, is that these family vloggers would literally be poor if they didn't have their kids in their content. Okay, maybe not poor. But they would have to get regular jobs, and regular jobs certainly are not going to give them that influencer lifestyle that they are so desperately all clinging on to for dear life. But anyway, let me know who I should talk about next, and I will talk to you guys next time.